Sure, y'all right on time tonight. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. I see y'all. Make sure y'all tell somebody about this live because I'm telling y'all this is going to be a good one. Something that I feel like a lot of us don't prepare or we just weren't educated on. I know I wasn't and I've been learning that, you know, as I've been growing my business. Um, but tonight we're going to learn about taxes and, you know, how to prepare and how to get the right accountant on your team. So we're just waiting for Sakina to get in here. Mm, and just speaking of the queen, there she is. Right on time. Uh oh. Alright, there we go. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. No problem, no problem. How are you? I'm great. I'm and great. I'm saying it right, right? Sakina? Yes, it's Sakina. Okay. okay, all right. Wanted to make sure I got it right. But nah, thank you for taking the time to, to join us. Take, take the time to join us. Something that me and my colleagues have been talking about for a while now. Something we don't really care to talk about. But, you know, as your business grows, it's something you have to talk about. Yeah, you need to talk about some necessity. So, yes. Yes. But how are you, though? How was your day? How's your week going? You know what? It went, my week has been amazing. Today was awesome. I did a prior event to getting on here okay. uh, about helping people about forming their businesses and making sure they properly plan. So you also do business preparation as well? I do. Okay. All right. So, so what don't you do? I don't do criminal law. I don't do family <laughs> law. <laughs> The thing, the things I do, that's a shorter list. I am a tax attorney. I represent people before the IRS. So if they have a problem with the IRS, they need legal representation. I'm here. I form businesses. Um, I form nonprofits, which is a form of a business. Okay. But I do tax preparation. The only thing is when it comes to some state laws, because I'm not licensed in the various states, I may not be able to handle different state-specific things. But if it's federal, yes. But tax preparation, it doesn't matter where they're located at. I mean, it's a prepared to tax returns. So tax prep all across the board, that's just, you know, we could take you anywhere. Yeah, you can. Okay. And federal issues, you can take me anywhere. But you, I was going to say, so you did say something that kind of like triggered, like, wait, you said, you said federal, what did you say? You said, er, oh, federal issues. Yeah, but you said like federal, I don't know, lawsuits or something you were saying. Oh, you, representation before the IRS. So Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be cursing. Don't be cursing. <laughs> don't be cursing. Don't be cursing. So, like, wait, where am I? And I dropped my pen. Uh, just make sure you say that. Federal federal representation before the IRS. Yes. That's something uh, we're going to have to talk But I don't want to talk about it just yet. I don't want to talk right. about it yet. That's okay. Don't, yeah. That's give, me the, okay. give me the easy stuff. Give me the easy stuff. Okay. But but let's start out, Sakina, with just again saying thank you for joining. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is A. Lee Real Estate Anthony Lee, here in Philadelphia, licensed agent and investor. And tonight we have special guest Sakina, um, who is you're in where are you at DC, Baltimore? I'm in Baltimore. Baltimore, yes. Who was in Baltimore? Um, and go ahead and go ahead and say all your uh, all your titles. Go ahead and give them all your titles again. So I am a licensed attorney. Um, I'm licensed in the state of Maryland, actually from Philadelphia. I've been in Maryland for eight years now. Um, I handle tax. So I represent people before the IRS. So if you have an IRS problem or you have a state tax issue, uh, I'm able to represent you. I help businesses. I help people form their businesses. I also uh, form businesses. Um, I also do tax planning. So it doesn't matter where you are at. I can help you tax plan and help you save money for your business. Um, I also do tax preparation from basic 1040s where someone has one W-2 to uh, business, various businesses. So if you have a partnership, corporation, I'm able to do that. I see my cousins on here there saying. Well, you got, I was going to say, I didn't already <laughs> talk to like two of your cousins today. Everybody yeah. hit me up like, yo, that's my folks. I'm like. Well, I know we from Philly. Like everybody, everybody, cousin. They like know, like that's my cousin. That's my no, they're my real cousin. They're, they're real, really. Oh, everybody, everybody. Yeah. Okay. I have a big family. Yeah. So, um, so I do that. I'm also a full time professor. So I, um, I teach. At a, which university? 
at University of Baltimore School of Law. So I'm a law nice. professor. Um, I teach the low income tax clinic. So let's say someone doesn't have the funds to pay for a tax attorney. Mm -hmm. They come to our clinic and get free legal representation. And I also teach a, um, a nine week course where I teach students how to prepare for the Maryland income tax exam. So from tax preparation, I know it inside and out. So that's oh. my little spill. So you also, from what I'm hearing, so you got the arm where you're also helping the community. So you got the high level stuff, and then you also have for the for the everyday, for the people who just still need your services, you're also giving back to the community. Yes, I give back to the community a lot. Yes, that's what I do. Yes. That's amazing. I like that. Because you Thanks. know, when you like, yo, I got to call the attorneys, like, yeah, it's 250 for an hour or 450 Like, I just had one question. So the people in the community, you know, growing up in the in the in the in the inner city is like, yo, I'm not trying to talk to no, no no lawyer, none of that stuff. Like, or let alone just the whole myth that I don't pay taxes. Like, yo, I'm gonna just keep this money under the mattress and just stay under the radar. Mm -hmm. But people don't realize, like, yo, you might save. Just say you saved a hundred grand in ten years. You could have had that hundred grand by having your taxes in order and going to the bank and being able to get a line of credit through your business or absolutely. Okay, yeah. So it's like that's that was the other thing that had me intrigued because it's like none of this stuff we talk about or people don't. I know people don't really push it. Like, yo, call your cousin Pete. You know, cousin Pete, he do a taxes. He not he not licensed or anything, but he got that service on his computer and he gonna hook you up for sixty dollars. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I don't believe in the hookups. Like, you know, I feel like if you could pay for a Gucci bag, why not pay for things that you need? Like a Gucci bag, the moment you walk out the store, it depreciates. But if you hire someone to help you with legal issues that is a a, a a money that you're paying for something of value and so you you know you got to think about the, about the mindset of you know are you buying stuff for for show and it's temporary or you are paying for something that's going to help you grow and so a lot of times with some small businesses especially black businesses the reason why we don't grow is because we just had this idea of, i'm not trying to pay taxes but sometimes paying taxes can actually help you and if you show that you make money you can get a line of credit, you know, so by having, by balling out and, and using all your money and not properly allocating expenses correctly, you may have losses every year. But there's no need to brag about how much money you make, but your tax returns say that you made negative $20,000, so are you really balling? You're not balling at all. Right. And then when you're trying to make your business grow, you can't even get a line of credit because how would someone believe that you're able to pay, you're able to get a line of credit for $30,000, but you didn't make any income? Everything stems from the tax return. So I'll say even with just state the pandemic, you wasn't following taxes, you didn't want to get your business established, now you didn't get none of the none of the grants or any of the SBA money that was gonna help keep you afloat. Yeah, but even there's some people so there's been I've been reading, there's been a lot of uh, cases where some people were applying for these SBA loans. And they, they prepare fraudulent applications. <laughs> I mean, so it's like, you know, whatever's done in the dark will come eventually come to light. Mm -hmm. So what's the point of you're getting this money for what? Now, if you're going to get this money, are you trying to flip this? Are you trying to invest in your business? Or you want this for personal use? If we you want this for to, personal we're use. We're trying to go to Atlanta and, 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 and cop up. You know, we're trying <laughs> to go to uh, Philly versus Atlanta. No, nah, that's not, you know, you got, I think as a business owner, you got to think like a business owner, you know, and it's one thing to make money, but what are you doing with your money? Okay. You put aside money. I'm a tax professional. I pay taxes. I hate paying taxes, but I got to pay it. I can't tell somebody else to pay it and I'm not paying it. So I pay taxes and it's just, it's not having that mindset. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're making money or you putting money aside for taxes or are you, are you investing? What, what are you doing with your money? Are you using this money to invest in another business? Are you saving money or are you just wasting money? No so, one doesn't like to waste money. So from the, let's just go from like the funda fundamentals of a business. What are the things that we should have set up so that our business can be prepared to grow and be successful? I think, I think the first, I think the first thing is before you even, even start the business, you definitely need an attorney on speed dial. I think that's by far, the most important thing. The reason why I say this is because a lot of times people get this idea that they're going to form a business using LegalZoom. And I absolutely hate LegalZoom. I mean, it doesn't, it, it's pretty much you just inputting data and they just process it. Right. Like I just briefly, I just, we just recently talked about this on our prior presentation.
And Aaron just made a comment like, you can say your name is Minnie Mouse. They will <laughs> process your document as Minnie Mouse is being the owner. That's, you need, that's you a good need point. A, you need, yeah, you need If you make attorney. a mistake, nobody's going to check it or fix it for you. They're just processing it. It's just exactly, computer. exactly. And you need, a, you need an attorney because an attorney can tell you the things that you should watch out for. They can tell you about the laws, things that what you need to do to protect your business. So always have an attorney on speed dial. Um, the second thing is figuring out what business entity is best for your business. So you have a, a sole proprietorship where there's no personal protection. You have a limited liability company, which shields you from personal um, liability if somebody tries to sue you individually. Then you have a corporation. And then the next thing is, out of those three, should you make some type of election? You know, are you trying to be a nonprofit? Then you do the necessary documents to be a nonprofit. Are you, should you be someone that should be an S corporation? Those things. But it's about the planning. Like, what type of business entity work for you? And the only way you're able to find that out is by actually having a business plan. Like, who are your final targets? Um, what type of things? Are you trying to sell things? If you are, then that goes into another set of planning because you may have to pay sales and use tax. Um, but just talking about the services, like figuring out what type of service you want, what are you trying to do, and then actually looking at the different business structures if you see which one works best for you typically someone that's just starting out um a limited liability company may work for them okay and then you know as they progress and start to grow and make money then we can look at different other entities to see what will help them save money from a, a, a tax perspective um three i think that um once you have your business set up you know, find people that can help you because, you know, I, I believe that success is never done in isolation. You know, you could be a one man shop, but you can't do everything. Right. And so you may not have the money to pay for somebody as a full time employee, but I think that you can like find people as independent contractors to help you with different, different things that you're working on at different times. Nah, that's, that's, and I feel like learn that in the beginning because I just, I literally just did a video about that. I was supposed to, I was going to drop about, being able to delegate. So like, as you grow your business, your life grows, you can't be 12 places at once. So something's always going to suffer. Yeah. You know, you might be good at six different things, but you, what's the one thing that you're really great at at the end of the day? Um, yeah. So that I, I definitely agree with that. And I definitely agree with about the accountant side, about the, 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 the tax accountant and everything and having all that stuff in place, because as you grow, you got to figure out how this money needs to be positioned. So you don't end up having a big IRS bill yeah. at the end of every year. Um, can you can you touch on that in regards to like just dealing with the IRS? Like just say it. So just first example is if I haven't filed taxes, I've been in business for two three years. Am I able to go back and file, or am I like what what should I be doing if I haven't filed? I've been I've been running my business. I got an LLC, but I never like made everything official as far as filing my taxes. Yeah, so you can actually go back and file tax returns. Um, I, I say the sooner the better because if the IRS has different um, income documents on file for you, like let's say if you had a W-2 or 1099 and that's on file, because whoever issued a 1099 or W-2, they also had to submit it to the IRS. Okay. And what will happen is that the IRS doesn't see any type of return on file. What they would do, they would do what's called a substitute for return. And a substitute for return is a, a return that the IRS prepares based on the income that they have to determine whether or not you owe taxes. So you can go back and, and file those old returns. If someone has been um, not complying with the IRS, a rule of thumb is to file the current in the last six years of tax returns, okay. if that applies to them. So if I just, let's say I just been flying under the radar and now we got to go back six years, like that's going to be a crazy bill. Well, it depends if you owe. If you haven't filed all those years, right? That's what I'm saying. Like I, these person, I'm just hypothetical. First, hypothetical is we didn't file nothing. Like the IRS ain't been looking for me. I ain't been looking for them. I well, got the, the money. I got the money in the shoebox at home next to the Gucci's. Right. So what? What would happen? What I would do is I would actually um, prepare a power of attorney for the client to see what the IRS has on file for them. And so the question becomes, even though there hasn't been returns that's been filed for years, the question becomes, were they even required to file a tax return? And so they had a business. Um, the rule says that if you have a business, if you're a single member LLC, single member, member means owner of a limited liability company. Okay. And so if you haven't filed in years, but let's say your net income was less than $400, you're not required to file. 
So gotcha. that applies to you. You don't have to worry about that. But as a strategy, what I would do, let's say someone didn't file in years and they made well over $500 or so. What I would do is I will actually prepare a power of attorney to submit to the IRS so I can talk to the IRS on behalf of my client to see if they even process any returns for them, like a substitute for return. And then I will actually prepare a return and say, hey, although you had this liability, let me show you why the amount should be lower based on what I had. Okay. When, you, when you have someone that hasn't filed in years, it's a strategy that goes into, into place because you never want the IRS to believe that you are, um, there's some type of echo. I don't know what's wrong with that, bro. But um, you don't want the IRS to believe that you are trying to evade to pay taxes. So I would do some type of strategy involved. Is that better? Sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, that's better now. That's better. So what? Hold. Okay. Oh. How about now? Yes. That's cool? Yes. Okay. I had the speaker, I guess, blocked, so you couldn't. That's why I was coming back. Okay. So Erin made a question. She said, what's wrong with letting the IRS prepare a substitute return? So the issue of allowing the IRS to prepare a substitute for return technically is not a real return. They're just trying to figure out how much you actually owe. The downfall to, to that is when they actually prepare a substitute for return, they're not considering any deductions that you may be eligible for. Um, they may not consider the correct filing status. So if you're married, they may have you as married filing separately, where you can file married filing jointly, and it'll be advantageous for you. So they don't consider all the deduction that you're able to claim. They just look at your income, based on the income, determine how much tax you should pay, and send you a bill. I got you. So it's not like, it hasn't been, I guess the term is audited or prepared. It's right. Not, it hasn't been fully prepared. It's just basically an assumption in an amount. Correct. That is correct. That's so, correct. so all right. So we got the person who hasn't filed what they should do. Now, what about somebody who has filed, but they have they filed personal? Like I got a job still, but I haven't filed in my LLC. But I, I haven't made any money. Should I still file the LLC even though we have no? If you yeah, if you haven't made any money from your business, then you're not required to file that. So if you have a uh, LLC and it's just you that own it then the actual income will be reported on what's called a Schedule C. That's attached to your individual tax return. And so if you're not required to file because you did not make any money, there's no requirement for you. The only requirement for you, if you have a, a, li a limited liability company in your particular state, you need to see what are the annual fees for you having the business in that state. You may have to file an annual report. But from a federal tax standpoint, okay. if you didn't make any money, there's no need. you don't need to report anything. Gotcha. And then let's go in a little deeper about the people who are filing, but they're not paying their federal, like they got the payment plan. So is it okay to have a payment plan with the IRS? Absolutely. So what happens, so here's how the IRS works. You file a tax return based on the following, based on the tax return, you either owe or you have a refund or you pretty much are at zero. You don't owe or nor, nor would you receive a refund. If you owe taxes, the IRS will send you a bill saying that you owe. The IRS has to give you notice on top of notice to let you know, hey, you need to pay this bill. Failure to pay the IRS, then they have what's called levy actions. They can actually levy your bank account to get your money. So to prevent them from any type of collection activity, you want to get into a payment plan. You want to make sure that you're compliant. Now, if you owe under $50,000, you can easily go online and get into a payment plan yourself. Okay. And however, let's say like the payment plan that they propose when you enter any information, it doesn't work for you. Do you want to talk to a, a, a tax professional to figure out, you know, to get you into a payment plan that actually works for you? You mean a lot of times when talk to some talk. You mean talk to you? You said yeah, a tax you can talk to me. I mean, you yeah. are a tax professional. Who else? Yes, am I, I am. Yes, I yeah. am. All right. Okay. 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 I'm just saying. I always tell people like, listen. I can sit there and tell you what I do, but I want you to make that decision. If you want to work with me, we can work together. You want to hire somebody else, by all means. I'm great at what I do. I'll just tell you that. I'm just great at what I do. <laughs> so, but that's what I'm saying. Like, why, now that we know, why go somewhere else? Because you're going to spend the money twice. Because yes. I already know how it go. I'm going to go over here and save some money. It's not going to work. Then I'm going to come back over here to you, and now I'm paying twice. Yeah. And But the one thing I can tell you is, and, and I can't speak for other attorneys. I can speak for myself, is that, you know, I, I do a lot of 
giving back. And the one thing I could say, once I assess a client, if I feel like from a cost perspective, it doesn't even make sense for me to take on their case, I will tell them how to do their case by themselves. Or I can recommend them to go to pro bono services. That way it saves us both time and money. So that way they can um they can get it done. And I don't have to worry about spending an arm and a leg. I'm not in the I'm not in the practice of trying to just get somebody's money. I need to see if we if you can be a good client for me and I could be a good attorney for you. So um someone just had a question. What state do you do taxes for? I do taxes for all states. I have clients all over. So she missed the part earlier, I think, when you said you do taxes in all states, but you only do federal. No, so if there's like a state, like a state issue. Okay. Um now if it's dealing with a state tax issue, I can actually help but any other state issues i can but if it's dealing with tax i can do it all it doesn't matter question for you which college you go to i went to the best uh university in pennsylvania i went to bloomsburg university it's okay. the best it's the best university in pennsylvania you sure? yeah. you i'm sure? positive you went to the bloom you sure yeah what school did you go to i went to newman newman university oh that's okay <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I got a lot of folks that went to Bloom, so I, I know about Bloom. Yeah, great school. All right, I ain't, ain't going to take nothing from it, but I see all your folks is jumping in here showing you out, so that's why I had to ask. Oh. <laughs> Look, they, now they talk about IUP. Um, but so just say, for instance, you got somebody, or not even somebody, but what about couples? Like, if you're married, should we be filing separate? Or can my wife file one way, I file another way, and I not have any legal ramifications? Yeah, so there's two, there's actually three ways you can file when you're married. So the first one is you can file married filing jointly. That just means that all of your income is reported on one tax return. It's advantageous because you're able to be eligible for various credits. So you're eligible for the earned income tax credit if that's applicable to you. You're eligible for the, the child tax credit. The child and care expenses, if you have um, dependents, um, you're eligible for those things. Um, you can also file as married filing separately. That's where one spouse filed their own tax return with all their income, and the other spouse files their tax return with all their income. The but disadvantage is... Huh? Will that tie together, though? No. It's pretty much you're married filing separately. Each spouse files their own tax return. There's nothing combined. So they won't. So they won't be. They won't be stuck with the good and bad of each other from that standpoint. Correct. Okay. Correct. The downside is that you you're not eligible for the various tax credits, like the child and dependent care credit, um, the earned income tax credit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But if you file separate and y'all got kids and stuff, you saying no, you won't get the credit for the kids. You won't be able to get the credits. Yes, that's correct. Because it's two incomes. Yeah, but it's two separate returns. So that's the downside to filing separately. If you file separately, you're not eligible for those credits. However, mm -hmm. when someone is married and they're trying to figure out what will help them from a tax perspective, I do a tax analysis. I do a tax analysis to see what would be advantageous for that for that couple at that time based on their income. You know, right. so you file you know, separately. Everybody want that want them returns for the kids. Everybody yeah. wants the, want the returns for the kids. Yeah, so I would have to do a, I would have to do an analysis to figure out what would actually help. But that's the downside, you know. When you file separately, um, there's no uh, the the credits they're not available for you if you're filing separately. That's the downside to it. Can I? Can we? Can you like still file single? Like, all right, we married, but we still gonna file single because we already you can't. Filing you single. can't file single if you're married. However, there's exceptions. So you could file single if you are going if you had a legal separation, you can be deemed as single. You can file head of household as a married person if you live apart from your spouse more than six months. You'll usually see this when someone is, let's say one spouse is in the military, they're deployed. One spouse can file head of household and claim the kids. The other spouse will have to file married father separately. Um, or let's say someone's going through a divorce. <laughs> then they can, um, one can file as head of household. The other one can file married father separately. Look, they talking about I'm not get I'm that's why I'm never getting married. Oh, that's, that's my Messing up their tax return. She told me she's gonna get on here and troll. But I think the most important thing too, like I read a lot of articles with communication, and I deal with a lot of married couples. The reason why some people have hard times in, in marriages as it relates to finances is because they don't talk about taxes. Like you know, you go through premarital classes, they may talk about hey, you need to file your tax return jointly, but 
you don't necessarily have to file jointly if it's not advantageous for you. And that's one thing, like finances is so important to discuss. Whether you're married or not married, you need to understand money. If you don't understand money, you will always have a broke mentality. Like you will always be broke mentally. And I think that is very important. As a tax attorney, I educate my clients. You know, within looking at a return within 30, I want to say 30 seconds, I can tell a lot about the client. So you really have to understand money. And once you understand money, it's not bad if you file jointly. It's not a bad thing at all. Well, if if the if the tax return get messed up, if the, the refund check get messed up, it is. Well, here's the thing. The purpose of filing a tax return is not to get a refund. The purpose of filing a tax return is to make sure your return is done correctly. Now, you may get a refund, you may not. But you have to get out of the mindset that you're expecting a refund. The goal is you want to make sure that the returns is done correctly. So I always tell clients, like, listen, and I'm very transparent. Sometimes I can be very blunt. I tell clients, if you are trying to find somebody to give you the hookup, if you're trying to find somebody that's going to give you the maximum refund, I am not your girl. You can go to H&R Block. You go to Liberty, Ooh. Liberty, Jackson, and Hewitt, or whatever they're called, <laughs> you go there. But because you want to get out of that mindset, because if you, if you had this mindset and this idea that you're going to always get a refund, you're not thinking. And the goal is to do the return and do it correctly. The reason why some people get refunds and they're not eligible for it is because there's fraudulent things reported on their tax return for them to get a refund. Now, if you get a refund because you pay too much taxes, yippee for you. But if you pay too much taxes, that just means that you need to adjust your withholdings. Wait, Why right, pay so, so said, much? You said like three things, three things, right? So before okay. I forget them, all right? Well, I just got to roll it back. So one, you said you shouldn't be doing your tax returns just for a refund. So I'm not, I'm not, so just taking not even just business, but every day or just during tax season. So I'm hearing the accountants like, yo, they like, I'm running it up doing these tax returns and everybody love me because I get them a return. Yeah. So you're saying that mindset, we were taught wrong in our community about tax returns. Absolutely. Absolutely. If that's and the I, only and, check you get all year, you in trouble. First of all, can I be very honest? So, if you're waiting. Come on, I got my, I got my glass. I told you. <laughs> don't. I don't got my glass. But if you're waiting, if you're waiting out of one time out the year to get a check, your whole mindset about money is skewed. And so you know, when people hang disconnect on us, be be careful. Be careful. I don't care. I'm speaking the truth. I mean, I'm trying to help the community out. But that's that's but that's real stuff. You want to be honest. And I tell people that, like, you know, at the end of the day, if you get a refund because you pay more taxes, like I know, let's say like a, a person just has one W two. And they own a house and they're able to claim it. And that, that house actually helps them. They make it a refund. And that's good for them. But I'm so talking you're about saying it's people. a benefit to owning the house? Absolutely. I'm a homeowner. Absolutely. Yes. Because somebody, I literally just seen somebody post a meme, and I hate this meme. You're not, there are no benefits to being a homeowner because the bank still owns your mortgage. I said, well, what benefits do you get with the landlord other than him raising the rent or her raising the rent every year? Yeah. Or are no. you having to call and pray that they're going to come fix the heat because the heat ain't on and they telling you they don't turn the heat on till Thanksgiving? A house is a great investment. You know, I purchased my house March of last year. Congratulations. And I was able to, thank you. And I was able to claim my house on my return for the first first time. And, you know, a house is an investment. You know, whatever. Get. I mean, I had my basement flood, flooded like three weeks after I had my house, you know. But it's it's things like even though that happened, it's still mine. Like, this is still my house. I have equity in my house after over a year. So I can go to the bank and take out an equity loan and say, you know what? I want to take this and buy something else. So it's it's a great investment. I own it. My mortgage is going to be the same. Like, it's not going to go high next month because the, the banks want me to, they want to do something. No, my mortgage is going to stay the same. What it can do, it can go lower because I can refinance or whatever. And get a cheaper interest rate. Yeah, get a cheaper interest rate. But at the end of the day, like, a, a you know, a house is awesome. But mm. back to your question about, you know, the, the mindset of, of people is that, you know, one, you, you do tax returns. The reason why you file tax returns is because you are required, if you are required to file. So based on your filing status and your age, there's income threshold that you have to meet. Like, if you're single, the threshold is $12,200. So if you made over that, then you have to file a tax return. Um, same with people that's married, like 24200 
if you make that amount or more at, as a group, then mm -hmm. you have to file a tax return. So the whole thing about filing tax returns, if you're required to file, you have to, you have to file a tax return. But you're not filing a tax return just to get a refund. You're filing because you are probably required to file. Or maybe you had taxes taken out and you want those taxes back as a refund. If you are eligible for it. But you have to get out. And I see that a lot in, in some of the in black communities that, you know, I'm filing this tax return. I'm going to get this big refund. And usually around December, I'll get calls like, you know, I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to hire. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to help you make your decision. And, it, and here, here's what it is. You know, if you're looking for somebody to get you a big refund, please take me off the call list. I'm not the girl for you. Okay. Because I want to be honest with you. I'm going to do your return correctly. And if you have an issue with the IRS, I can call and represent you. Now, if you go to somebody around the corner, they're going to have stuff prepared on their tax return. And guess what? When that return is filed and you get a letter from the IRS, they are nowhere to be found. And when you're trying to report them, guess what? You can't report them because you don't have their information. It appears that you did the return, not someone else. <laughs> My information is on every return that I prepare. Mm. So that's just, you know, that's just being honest. I just like to be honest with clients. I like to tell them exactly what it is. I don't like to sugarcoat anything. I like to tell them it's black and white. There's no gray, black and white. You either want to do it right or go somewhere else. That's it. So, so let's rewind also. So if I'm not aiming for the tax return and you said, I think if too much taxes was coming out of my income throughout the year, or yeah. I need to, I need to do what I need to. You adjust. need to you need to change your withholding. So every time every person that has a um a a full time job or a part time job, you had to do what's called a W four. That's your withholding. You're pretty much telling your employer, "Hey, this is the amount of taxes I want withheld. The higher the number, the more the taxes that will come out." And it, and it sounds backwards because a lot of people say, well, hey, if I had five, that means I want more taxes coming up. But actually, it's the opposite. And so there's actually instructions on the W-4 that shows you how to complete it. So that way you can have the correct taxes taken out. The downside is that when you are um, completing this form, you can't go to your payroll department and ask them to help you because that's asking for legal advice. Right, and they right, can't right. give you legal advice. So, so you're, you, you just literally just gave me us another gym to put more money in our pocket throughout the year instead of one time a year, doing what we already do every day, go to our nine to five. Yeah, go see a nine to five. Make sure your withholdings are done correctly. That You'll have more money in your paycheck instead of you having so, more taxes taken out. So on average, do you know, like, norm, what's the normal amount that people say take out? I would say for withholding, if it's just you, if you're a single person, I would just say one. But it depends on your income. So a lot of times when someone is trying to figure out their withholding, I do a tax analysis. And I can determine what their withholding should be. Then you also got to take into consideration, you know, maybe they have a house. So the house may help them. So instead of them being at one exemption, maybe they should be at two exemptions. And let's take into consideration they have kids. That's another thing to take into consideration. So I help clients figured it out and I help do the analysis for them. So let's just say you got the house, you got the kids. Cause most of my clients, they got the house cause I help them get the house. They got the kids. That's why they want the house. Um, <laughs> so in that paycheck, we make the adjustment, put more money in their pocket. Now they're not relying on the income tax at the end of the year or once a year. Right. And the good thing is, depending, and, and based on that hypothetical, they may still get a refund because there's credits. They probably be eligible for the child tax credit. That's two. That's up to two thousand dollars per child. Whoa, 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 so, whoa, whoa! You you just gave us another. That's a double bonus. So now I'm getting more money in my paycheck, and I still got a chance. I might not get as large of a uh, refund. You may get a refund, but I still might get a little extra. Ah, here, go take that. Go do what you gotta do. Exactly. To help make more repairs or upgrades to your house that you're going to build equity in. Bingo. Stop. Stop. Bingo. That's, Stop. that's exactly what it is. All this through having the right tax prepared and, and, and not trying to avoid it. Yeah. So exactly. you're telling me if I do the right thing, I can actually benefit from doing the right thing. You absolutely can. Woo! Now, all right, so we got to switch a little bit. So what about if you a high-income earner? So I'm just saying, the bull, 
the you know the guy that's running stuff, he don't be paying no taxes. <laughs> but like I'm I'm the I'm the little guy on the block, and you know I'm 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 making it happen, but I'm paying taxes. It's not. I'm just saying like. What other, I guess, barriers do I got to put in place so that I can, uh, you know, like you said, or what should I be doing to make sure I'm, I got things in order so that we legally cannot have a lump sum of, oh, or a lump sum of a bill at the end of the year? Um, so, well, the jail, first... No, no, anything, yeah, and not to have to go to jail for 30 days. Yeah. So I, I would just say one, you know, for a person that has a business is, is putting money aside for taxes. And so, you know, sometimes you would have to figure out what would be your estimated taxes. So the only way to figure that out is looking at how much income do you make? And I can make a determination as to how much money you should put aside for taxes. The so general rule, I would say about 30% of your income that you make put aside for taxes for your woo, business. Woo, about 30%. Woo. I'm going to tell you why, because when you are, let's say like a person just own their business by their self, mm -hmm. you have to pay what's called self-employment tax. And self-employment tax is about 15.3% of your net income from your business. From the rich. That, yeah, so that your self-employment tax is considered your Social Security and Medicare tax. If you are an employee, they are being withheld from your paycheck. You go look at your pay stub, you're able to see that. So that's what kills business owners. Like that self-employment tax, they don't actually plan for that. That's aside from your federal taxes that you have to pay. So that is important to put that aside. So I would say about 30%. But why, why complain about taxes when you can save and plan so that when you have your bill, you're like, all right, I already have my money to the side. The question is, what are you doing with your money? So I was, sorry, so I was going to say, and like, I'll be transparent. Like, I be needing that money. That's what I'm saying. At 30%, it sounds like a lot. You know, sometimes like, so just say I, I might go on a run this month. Next month might be a little slow. Okay. You know, as an entrepreneur, some things be rolling, things be going. And, I know. And so then I'm not going to lie. I got a few bad habits. I got this thing with Jordan 1s. That's why we need to have, so I like Jordans too, <laughs> but we need to have a conversation <laughs> where we're able to talk about these things. So I don't I have no Gucci. Go. I just got this Jordan 1 problem. Oh, Jordan 1, okay. Just just those. Okay, okay. But I I would say this, like I think, as an entrepreneur, I think it's important to have a budget. You know, so you may not be able to get those Jordan ones as much. You may have to say, you know what? I gotta sit this one out. I'm gonna have to sit this one out. Yes. <laughs> so, and this is the part I do hate about the budget. When you say budget, it's like, like I feel like, like, like you're a kid. You yeah, like don't talk to me about no budget. Like put me on no budget. You know, I'm you can't spend out. money. You can't put me on no budget. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but I think the one thing that I've learned, um, I learned this a few years ago from my mentor was like, you know, as a business owner, you want to always have your expenses low. Always have your expenses low. Um, be mindful of what you spend because you don't know when that money is going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. And so you got to evaluate. If you're a business owner, you've been in business for more than a year, you look at your prior, you can look at your prior year income and say, okay, Based on these months, what were my good months and what were my bad months? So I know for me, as when I do tax preparation, my high months are usually from February to April. That's when I get the most sales. And so then after that, I have to think about, okay, well, after these months, what else can I do to make money? You know, mm -hmm. this full month, what, can I, what else can I do? I need to do more marketing. Because I know even though there's some people where – you know, the, the actual deadline has passed. What about those that haven't filed in years? Those are clients that I'm looking for. Or let's say if someone is living abroad, I do international tax. Let me market to them. Let me figure out when their tax returns are due and let me help them. So you have to, you, you know yourself more than anybody else. You know what you're going to spend money on. Look at the prior year books and say, okay, these are my good months. But what do I need to do on my slow month so that way I can have a good month every month? And that's what it goes to actually having goals for yourself for your business. You, you may say, this month, I want to make $10,000. Or this week, I want to make 10000 How would I get there? You eat what you kill as a business owner. So right. you have to have these, these guidelines in place and figure out how do you attack every goal that you set. All right. So as far as bookkeeping goals are just tracking my expenses, whether I'm a regular everyday person, whether I'm a business owner, do you have any preferences or systems that you recommend? 
Yes. So I recommend using um, QuickBooks. I, so you I smart. I, I can tell you smart. It's like I, I tried QuickBooks. And well, here's the thing. I need, I'm a I tax professional. You. I understand QuickBooks. If you're not a tax professional, you don't understand it. So QuickBooks is good because it, it links to your bank account. And it links to your bank account where you're able to track every expense. So you However, said that word. You said that tracking word about tracking my expenses. So then when you do the audit on my account at the end of the month, then you're going to be cursing me out. I'm able to see everything. I'm like, hey, stop this. I mean, I have I have a lot of male clients, and, you know, I see where they, you know, going to the Nike outlet and, you know, buy. I'm like, stop it. Okay? But it wasn't. Right. But it's, it's supposed to not supposed to come out of that account. It's supposed to go into it. You're supposed to transfer and use the other account. Yeah, 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 somewhat. But they but weren't supposed to spin out of their business account. Let's say that. <laughs> Not for spin out of business account. But yeah, but book but Quick. QuickBooks is good. And it's an ex it's a business expense. So if you pay for I pay like seventy dollars a month. Okay. It's an expense that you're able to have. But the good thing is when you have a bookkeeper, what they do is you make them an account into your, your actual account. Okay. And they're able to look at every expense and they're able to categorize it. They can say this is for your car, this is for office supplies these, these things are important so all right so so should the everyday person be using quickbooks no and, just business owners so what about the everyday person how can they like track their expenses and try to be more so if you don't have a business and you just want to track your bit your expenses you can actually use a um an app it's called mint i knew you was gonna say that i knew i know about <laughs> mint i knew you was gonna say that <laughs> so mint it, I, I was using men a couple years ago, and it was like, you know, you went out to dinner so many times. I was like, no, I was like, no. I'm dinner, not Starbucks, lunch. <laughs> Starbucks is like my favorite place. So um, I, I men is really good, but okay. I also know me. So I also know, like, if I go to the mall, I know exactly how much I'm going to spend, and I can't go over that. Like I know exactly how much I'm going to spend. See, I, that's why. That's why. Like I'm a. I already know I'm a bad client because I got impulse issues. You're not a bad client. I'll help you get on the right track. I have a lot of. If you think you're bad, I have clients that are ten times worse. Okay. So, so, so I, get I don't you on the right so track. Bad. Don't feel Yeah, you're so not bad. bad. Yeah. All right, I'll be sitting on. Look, I'll be sitting on the couch with you, like, like, like you, my therapist. As you go through my expenses, I'll be like. But you should see how good I look, Danny. You should see how good I look. And but it's it, like, it, I don't be draw. I don't draw like I used to. It's more. It's my kids. So yeah. it's like if I see it, I can't help myself sometimes. But having a good tax preparer, I can use my kids as a write off, right? If I can use up to thirteen thousand of income for them, right? I'm just. Yeah. I've been. I've been watching stuff on YouTube. No. That stuff is a lie. Yeah, there's one lady that's on there. She's like, yeah, you know, you can hire your kids. You can take them somewhere, and you can make it as a bit. That's all lies. No. So if you're going to hire your child, they have to do legitimate work. That's what the IRS says. You, you, they absolutely have to do work. And you're able they to collect pay. the trash. They clean up the properties. Do, do you give them checks? If my youngest is only three, do that matter? Yeah, yeah that does matter. A three-year-old... In other countries, three-year-olds are very, very resourceful. I'm trying to teach them resilience early on. All right, so just what about my six-year-old? Can I put him on the payroll? Can you can you show that he's doing legitimate work? Yes. It'll be so hard. He ha he has a like both my kids got company shirts and they know where the houses are. You definitely want to check the labor laws in the state of Pennsylvania. Let's All see right, if they approve so that. So talk to the state first. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, definitely do that. But so, but so, what? So, can I legitimately though? Can we pay our children? Like, can we put them on salary to help shelter some of this this tax hit? No, unless you have to. One, you have to check with your labor labor laws. But if someone that's a minor, like three and six, probably no. But if you have like, like 13, a, 10, 13. Thir I would say thirteen, yes. But definitely check with your labor laws too, and see what the the actual um, the laws are in place, what you can and cannot do. If you meet the labor laws, then yes, <laughs> you can. Okay. Okay. All right, look, I'm, I'm trying. And I, look, I, I thought, it, look, we was trying to do find legit reasons. Legit reasons. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Well, well, thank you. Well, look, at least you told me, so now I know to take that off yeah. the sheet.
Yeah, it's it's funny because my clients when they talk to me, like I feel like I'm talking to my therapist. Can I sit in your chair? I'm like, just just go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, but that's look, I already know. I didn't I didn't had a couple of these pep talks. I had a couple of them. Yeah, and that's why I just I be anybody that deals with me, I just warn them like, yo, how open do you want me to be? Because once I open, I can't I can't close it. Yeah, no, I and then that's a part of me being a dad. I'm way more emotional these days. Like I just. <laughs> Cartoons make me cry, you know. Movies make me cry, like it just oh. be what it, it be. What know, it be. No, I understand. I understand. All right, so you gave us a lot. So for anybody that wants to use your services, um, how do we go about, you know, connecting with you? Um, I can actually type in my email. Well, I can type in my website. Um, they could find me, and they could also find me on my. My Instagram, so whoever's following me, you can follow Tillman LLC, um, and you're able to find me on there. I do, every Tuesday, I do what's called Tillman Tax Tips, and it's okay. free. Um, I always do taxes. I'm always open to different topics that people want me to discuss, but that's my website there, but you can follow my business page, my Tillman LLC Instagram page. Mm -hmm. My information is on there as well. If you click on email, that goes directly to my business email address. I have my I always look at my email all the time. Oh, so the name of the, the program for regular working people is called Mint. That's exactly what that is. It's called Mint. And don't say regular working people, just say working people. We yeah, all working people. Yeah, we're, we're all, all superhuman in our own way. But yes, <laughs> Mint. <laughs> oh man. Um so what else did I have to ask you? Is that God, look, we gotta utilize this time while we can, while we got you. Um, yeah. So oh, so as far as working with you, um, is there like a process? So like, say I'm a person that look, I'm going to the bank next week and they need my tax returns or they need me to fill something out. Am I able like once you book, once I'm your client, am I able to reach out to you throughout the year for services? Yes. So here, so here's the one thing that I I do. Once you're a client, you're technically like always a client. So a lot of times my clients, let's say they came to me for one particular thing. It could be for a business formation. They may call me throughout the year and say, Sakina, I have a, a question. I saw something online. Can you answer this for me? I don't mind doing that. Um, for tax prep, if you need me, if you, let's say it's after tax season, you still need to have a tax question. Just reach out to me. Um, email is the best way to get to me. That's like the best way to get to me. Okay. Um, and I also like to do um, speaking engagements. So, you know, I was in Philly last year doing speaking engagements. It was kind of hard now this year due to the pandemic, but I'm always open to do speaking engagements. I always like coming back home. So, so uh, don't don't tell me that because I keep telling people like, yo, once you tell me you want to sign up for something. So like we're doing a home buyer event this Sunday. Um, so I understand it's a pandemic, but we are going to be cautious, limited, limit, limited okay. amount of people. Um, and then on top of that, yep, yep, Tom, I got the hat on, man. I got the hat on. I've been rocking it all week. Um, but with limited amount of people, but I'm always looking to connect with people to give this information to the community because, you know, like we talked about home ownership. Like, it's so many false narratives out there about home ownership and how oh, hard yeah. it is. So I want to break those gap, those barriers and bridge the gap on helping, especially our age group, you know, do what other people said they couldn't do. Uh, whether you're right. first time college grad, high school grad, I feel like home ownership is the way to wealth and setting your family up good, bad, or indifferent. I don't care if you got the worst house on the block, but you still got a house. At some point, that house exactly. is going to be worth something. Um, so to be able to set people up with just the information you gave today, I feel like having that adjusted income and that pay stub, now you could go afford a better house probably because yeah. all that stuff is not coming out of your paycheck. Um yeah. So, like, that alone was so valuable. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't mind telling people about the process for me when I purchased the house. Like, it was an easy process for me, but I properly planned in the beginning. Were you, a, were you W-2 or 1099 at the time? I was a W-2. I always had my business. So, I always had a full-time job, and I had a business. So, I, I love it. I, just by the way, I love it how you have your 9 to 5, which covers the basics, and then you got the additional income from your business. I believe in different streams of income. So, mm, yeah. mm. Yes, I believe in that. And I, that's how I stand you, by that. And, that, and by also, that. that's how you, I guess, made use of your degree. Because you are using your degree, but still chasing your, not chasing, but pushing your dream of the entrepreneur side as well. 
Yes, that's correct. I'm going to put my my Instagram in here. It's Tillman LLC. Well, somebody somebody trying to get us to do that five to ten. They talk about writing off business expenses, and they didn't make any money yet. What expenses do you got if you haven't made any money? Yeah, the only expenses that you have is the startup cost. So for you to actually um, form the business in itself, that's the only expense that you would have if you but, didn't make the money. But that, and again, what did you say earlier about we shouldn't be trying to figure out writing everything off versus knowing what the tax codes are and what's the best use for us, also based on our goals. Right. And then, you know, based on your actual expenses, you need to figure out what type of expense they are and make sure that you can actually write it off. So, again, that comes with just talking to a tax professional to go over those expenses with you. Okay. All right. I mean, you got anything else you think the people should know that most people just don't, you know, don't take use or well, heed to or pay attention to? Um, well, I'm very optimistic and I'm, I'm very, very positive. So I want to leave on a positive note. Um, this pandemic has shed light to a lot of things. And I think mm -hmm. um, it really opened people's eyes that you definitely need to bet on yourself at all times. Because I say that because a lot of people lost their jobs. You know, some people are still unemployed and they just heavily relied on their their full-time job for income and never consider looking outside the box. I know like four years ago I was laid off and I didn't know what the hell to do. I was making great money at a law firm. I got laid off. Um, and then I had, to, I had to think on my feet quickly. Like I always had a, a business, but I had to think quickly. Like, you know, I, I didn't have a house at the time, but I had to pay my rent. I had to do something. And so at that time, I just started to really market heavily on my business and my income significantly grew because I bet it on myself. And so for this year, if you are considering forming a business, like just do it. Don't be scared. Just do it. A lot of times people had this idea like, oh, you know, I, I want to do it. I, they talk about it, talk a good game. But if that's what you really want to do, go for it. And be cautious of who you tell your dreams to because there's a lot of people out there that are dream killers. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a dream, you stick to it and you just go for it. Like before you start your business, like write out a business plan. A business plan is very simple. It, it is no particular format. You don't have to follow anybody. It's something for you as a guide man. It's talking about the who, what, when, where, and how. You answer those questions, you have your business plan. And stick to it. Mm. Never be the cheap person. Never be the person that's the, that's the cheap professional. You, you charge what you are worth. I had people that try to talk me down. I'm like, listen, you can negotiate other things, but you definitely can't negotiate my prices. So be confident. If you're going to form that business, do it this year. 2020 is not over. You could definitely form a, a multi-millionaire business. You could be a billionaire by the end of this year. Like you could do all those things. You can make you can make money. Um, you can still give back to the community. That that's always a plus for me in my eyes. But always be always think outside the box too. But if you're going to form that business, do that. Are okay. you going to be scared? Probably so. But do it scared. <laughs> that's the way to it. Ooh. You said do it scared. Figure, do it scared. Figure, jump and figure it out. That's my. That's my. That's jump my and fit. figure it out. Two two years ago, I had um I had commercial space. I had a um a law office two years ago, and this was the time where I was saving to buy a house. I already had an apartment. I was like, well, damn, like how will I be able to save for a house, pay for my rent, and then pay for another rent? And I just thought about like, listen, if I don't bet on anybody else, I'm gonna bet on myself. So whatever this cost is for this for this rental space, mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it happen. And I did. And the only reason I don't have that space now is because I moved an hour away from it. So I was like, it don't make sense for me to have something. I found something that's closer. Okay. But other than that, like I bet it on myself. But I was scared. It was another expense, but I still did it. Right. So if you want something, man, go for it. Don't don't wait around and you're gonna wait around and it's too late. So if you're gonna form a business. Form it now. Get the right people on your team, and your business can grow. Mm. So you that definitely was some heat right there that you gave us right there to leave on a positive note. And with that said, again, where can the people contact you if they want to get connected with you? Yes. Yeah, so you can actually follow me on social media. It's Tillman LLC. I also put in my um, my website for my my law firm there, so you can definitely check that out. Um, but yeah. I'm always on Instagram. Every Tuesday, I do what's called Tillman Tax Tips at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm always giving out um, free tax advice. If you guys have a suggestion of what you want me to talk about, you can always just um, send me a DM, and I'm able to address it. 
But I do that every Tuesday. And if you look through my page, you'll see the different content where I talk about different things. Okay. You know, I'm a lawyer, but I'm also a professor. So I know how to explain things in a way that people understand. Nice. So I just want to give back and I want to help people. I want to make sure that you're making the right decisions when it comes to taxes. I'm not here to just collect a check. I'm trying to make sure that you understand what you're doing. Yes, I do business taxes. I do corporation tax returns. I do partnership tax returns. I do S corporation as well as nonprofits. But well, and you also, complex. you also uh, established businesses. Setting yes, up also established Yes. So new, new, yeah, new, you did miss a little bit, but yes. So Sakina does all the tax preparation, even if you got to uh, deal with the IRS and dispute something, um, or even if you haven't even talk to the IRS and you just out here put money under the mantras, she can help you. Um, yes. And, and also help your business grow. So like definitely the thing that we've been utilizing. So we will have to figure this out to get you in Philly. So we got myself on the real estate side. We got you on the tax side. We got new on the credit side. You know, we got the three headed monster right there. Yeah. Just let me, just, I mean, if you're trying to do something this year, um, the end of November will work or December. So just just hit me up. Now I mean, it's oh, so you want to you want to do something this year? We could do something this year, next year. Look, I'm all for it. Look, I'm just trying to end 2020 with a bang. So whatever I can do, hey, I'm here for it. Hey, new. It sounds like we're going on tour in December. All right, all right, Sakina. All right, look, okay. I'm look. I'm I'm telling you. I'm here. Yes. All right. We gonna we gonna work it out. Um. My oh, somebody asked a great question. Hope, hope we got time. Can you, um, the PUA, yeah, yes. P, so P, so PUA money and like that SBA money. So the PUA, I was that's for like the unemployment. If you got the unemployment, yes, that is taxable. The SBA loan, if you got like the SBA loan, you have to repay that back, whatever your repayment schedule is. But I thought so my accountant was going to help me get that stuff forgiven. So you have to look at the, I would have to look at the rules to see um, that there's different requirements to determine whether or not it's forgiven or not. I don't really touch on it. I usually tell someone to talk to an SBA representative, but I can also like go through the steps to see what's eligible for. I don't really touch on it. I can look at it if somebody needs to. Um, but yeah, some are forgiven and some are not. So okay. That's the thing. All right. So it's going to be a lot of people upset at the end of this year with all that money and stuff that that stuff we was talking about earlier that they was running it up yeah but... so is it is it a bad so let's can we just touch on that real quick is it is it horrible like multiple llc's and different uh sba loans is it horrible to have so no it depends like i would have to look at what you actually apply for Okay. I would have to look at like the application and see what you did. <laughs> so I would have to look at that. So yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So that's, that's something to consider. That was a great question. I don't know who asked that earlier, but that was a they, that was definitely a, a great question. Yeah. Um, and then what about the people that for the the, the PUA the unemployment money? Um, yeah, that's still taxable. That's still taxable. But I mean, they would get a ten ninety nine at the end of the year. But the, like they wasn't work. Some of these people wasn't working before this year. So like. What? Unemployment in itself is still considered taxable. But I'm saying it wasn't even working. How you get a PUA and you wasn't working a year before that? So, so that's the thing. So there's some some fraudulent <laughs> claims that's been, <laughs> that's been filed. <laughs> the IRS would do. The state would deal with them later. So okay. Um, so you get a, yeah. you get one of them certified letters you got signed for at the door. You know they're on their way. Yeah, you make it the, the the IRS at your door. Who knows? So, but yeah, so yeah, that you yeah, that that was an issue where people were. I know the IRS is going into that, saying how some people got the because that's from the federal government due to the CARES Act. Right. Um, people getting the the PUA, um, and they wasn't even eligible for. It, they wasn't even working. So I was you know, saying, right now, wasn't because, working. I know people that wasn't working since I was in high school. That's so sad. That's very sad. Yeah, that's sad. It's going to catch up soon. So once the IRS is able to get their, their people back into the office, they're going to start evaluating those claims. They're going to start getting letters saying that they owe all this money back. So, yeah. Woo. So what about the self-employed people? That Like, I'm self-employed, but I got some of that, that uh, PUA money. It's, it's just taxable. Yeah, it's just taxable. They're not, it's not nothing against you, but you are eligible to get that money as self-employed. Okay. All right. And I... I want to say this is really my last question. I, I want to say I promise my last question. Um, 
See, if somebody else asked another question, messed me up. Somebody said they know people in jail collecting it. <laughs> They're getting money on their books. <laughs> um, somebody said, is there a certain amount of children you have working for? Can you have a certain? How many children, I guess, can you have, can you claim to be working under your LLC? So that's kind of like a, a loaded a, question. A, a, a loaded question. Well, how many kids so, do you have? Legitimate kids? Do you? Yeah. Have? How many kids do you have that you that you? Uh, that actually live, that can actually be dependent. <laughs> and then until we had to look at the labor laws to see if it fits, if you are able to comply okay. the labor so laws. Okay, so depending on your state, that would determine. Yes, that. yes, that's correct. Uh, okay, all right. Um, oh, for people who are self-employed, that was my question. So, I, so yeah, so people who are self-employed, if I own my company, but I want to pay myself as an employee, like put myself on a pay schedule so I can still collect the W-2, so, so in that case, then you would want to elect to be treated as an S corporation because someone that just owns their limited liability company by themselves, paying yourself is considered a draw. It's not considered an expense. So paying yourself is never an expense. However, if you elect to be treated as an S corporation, then you then you can be considered as an employee and you're able to pay yourself. As so a, right now, paying yourself is not considered an expense. As an S corp. You can pay yourself. The S corp itself. is like the head of the whole company, and then the LLCs go under the S corp. No, the LLC. When you have an S corporation, you're making an election to be treated as an S corporation. And so, in that case, let's say, let's say your business is called um, Lee Real Estate. You have an LLC. You telling the IRS, "Hey, I want to make this election to be treated as an S corporation." Mm -hmm. That way, it's just saying that from a tax perspective, your business is separate from you. And so you can pay yourself a salary. However, I would have to look at your books to determine if you should be treated as a corporation. Well, I'm a realtor. All right, I would have to look at your income to determine if you should be considered as a corporation. All right, we'll talk offline. So I don't, yes. I don't, I don't, don't nobody report me to the IRS. I don't, look. We trying to do stuff the legal way though. We trying to I'm, do it the yes, legal way. Come yes. on, Sagina, work with me. I am working with you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. See, y'all, this not gonna be like you're going to uh, y'all auntie. You get a rib platter and some chicken wings. While this is going down, like no, you are gonna get real services, and y'all gonna be able to really be in position to grow y'all business and and put your family in position as well. So yep. once again, I definitely appreciate you. Um, for those of you who follow me or don't follow follow me, make sure you continue to follow me. Next week, we got a great guest. Um, we're going to be talking about wholesaling and, and being able to do real estate without like any formal education, just getting up and figuring it out with our guest. Um, Jameer, next Thursday at 8 o'clock. And then don't forget the following Sunday, November 15th, our first time home buyer event that we're going to be doing at the Cancer Who Center out in Port Richmond with Newt the Entrepreneur. He's going to be handling credit. I'm going to be handling the real estate stuff. And we're also going to have a mortgage specialist basically teaching you guys how to purchase a home or how to upgrade the house you're in to get to the next house. So make sure you, and you guys stay tuned. Link in my bio. And Sakina, thank yes. you again. I really, really appreciate it. My, your good friend, my good friend, Aaron, she connected me with you. That's how we got together. Yes. Me and Aaron used to work at um, Old Navy together. She told me. And that's my sorority sister, too. So Okay. All right. All right. Yes. So that's what's yes. up. That's what's up. Thank she's, you. She's, she's great people. Great people. Thank you, thank you. And would I have access to this video? Can you send me this video? So we'll talk offline. That's gotcha. one of the, the one of the IG glitches. So I can save it, but you're gonna have to screen record it, or I got to screen record it. But it's easier if you screen record it because you can take what you want. Got it. So okay. like my, my boy put me on. So like screen record it, but screen record it in clips. So do like a minute here, a minute there, or two minutes there, and just do the, gotcha. the snippets. Okay. Because I, I definitely want to go back and get that heat that you told us about that that pay that payroll information. I'm telling you, okay, that was that That's... was key right there. I never heard of that, and I know mad people that be like, "Yo, I get all this money taken out my 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 income." Yeah, and you know, well, I'm just waiting for this. No, you don't got to live that lifestyle of waiting for that tax return. Yes. Well, like we need to call HR ASAP. I need you to send me my paperwork and let's figure this out. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Um, you be safe. Enjoy. And look, I'll talk to y'all next Thursday. I see y'all good people.
All right, see you guys. Don't forget to follow me. Take care. Go ahead. Give me your, your IG one more time. It's Tillman LLC. So I'm going to post this in again. Uh, so, so, we're out, so I already know my man Newt is talking about, are you open for business now? He got questions, right? So I'm going to tell you, he do I, he does an IG live almost every night, and it's fire. So I don't know if you and Newt want to connect after this, because he probably get you on his IG live right now. It'd be like 50 people jump right in there, and y'all can right. go ahead. Newt, send me a message, now, and I'll respond to you. Hey, Newt, make it happen, Newt. All right, Sakina, thank you again. Take care. All right. All right. Bye.